I was coming up, they didn't put blacks in, in magazines, on covers of magazines. Joe Lewis and Chuck Norris and Ron Marchini, they were all on the front of these magazines at one time or another. Mm -hmm. But not this particular magazine, but Black Belt, Black Belt magazine. But I was never on the cover of Black Belt magazine. Not in the days in which I was fighting. I would see my name in a magazine sometime, but it would just say, Steve Sanders won. The internet. <laughs> and that was it. Um, right. People who are, are non-black, you could see articles in their pictures, either mm -hmm. on the cover or in the book that mm -hmm. they, they had written on. Mr. Parker had a book called Action Karate. This was the first uh, magazine of book that I'd ever been placed on the cover of. This is another magazine that Donnie and I were placed on many, many years ago. But before that, before this one, I was never on any magazine. And I never saw any blacks or even pictures of them in any magazine. This is a book that was put out by Great Grandmaster Ed Parker. This brother that I'm fighting, which is a Filipino brother, by the name of Carlos Boone, which was an excellent fighter. He was, a, he was always the international champion. And like I said, an excellent fighter. So he was on magazines. And we had a fight that is still on film. You go on the internet now, if you look up Carlos Boone and Steve Sanders, you'll see not this particular fight, but another fight that Parker set up for us to, for him to test me to see what kind of skills I actually had, unknowingly to me, that this guy in fighting him for that test, he was the champion at the time. I had was a newly made black belt for about two weeks, and I fought him. And it's on the, on the internet, even though it was pulled off of one of those eight millimeter the ones that go like it was bought, and it's still pretty good. You can still see it. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Carlos Bunda and Mr. Steve Sanders. He interviews Carlos Bunda, who was the international champion, a lightweight champion at the time, and he interviews Steve Sanders, who became the lightweight champion of everything later on. Mr. Sanders, <laughs> um, you've been competing for how many years? For about three years. About three years. Now, could you tell us some of the titles that you won? I won international lightweight. I won um, uh, San Francisco uh, state tournament lightweight, and uh, uh, Yuma, Arizona, as a brown belt, and numerous times as a white belt. This was on, on videotape, and in those days, it was reel to reel. There were no cassettes. This is actually, this wasn't film. This was video. And it was recorded on the first home video unit put out. Uh, it was put out by Sony and was called a CD2000. Kumite, which is a freestyle fighting, is one of the most exciting and exacting endeavors in competitive sports. It was reel to reel, and a reel cost like 50 bucks. I mean, in, in today's money, that's like $300 or, or more. I mean, it was a lot of money. And this stuff was stuck away in a drawer of mine for, oh, years and years. And um, Tom Bleeker married Linda Lee, Bruce's widow, and he mentioned an old video recorder that Bruce had that he used to use all the time. And I said, wait a minute. I said, this isn't a reel-to-reel, -reel, is it? And he says, yeah, it is. I said, oh, my God. See if I can borrow that because I've got some footage that I haven't seen in years. I would love to be able to see, and uh, and and I, you know, I know that if these things were so unstable that they even told you that if you recorded something on one machine, it might not play on another machine of the same make and model. It might, but it might not. Well, fortunately, it did. I'm mostly a counter man. I can move forward, but I like to counter a lot. I like to watch the guys that doing most of the attacking, so I don't know what to do. But we took 
the video that we had, and we recorded on another machine, another camcorder, off of the old monitor. So what you're seeing is of terrible quality, but it's something that it's the only way it exists. It just wouldn't exist any other way. And Now, the, the rest of the world got their martial science. We came from China. But if you look at it, it originally originated in Africa. If you go back into Africa now, you can find it on the pyramid. Both judo and uh, stand-up fighting, which is your martial science. It's on the pyramid in uh, Egypt. I've been there and I saw that. If you look in some of the books and you see them throwing over their shoulders and you see them throwing kicks up to the face. That's where it came from. Hell, we created that. But no art is supposed to stay the same. Because if it stays the same, it's a dead art. The martial science is a living art. It is supposed to grow. And without that growth, it is a dead art. Some people say, I teach the art that my teacher taught. So do I. But it is my expression of what he gave to me. I cannot be Ed Parker. And I know that and I've learned that. Nor do I have the same bone structure that he has. Every race has a different bone structure. If a Japanese teach me martial arts, it doesn't mean that I can't ma master that martial art, but not exactly the way he can. His foot placement may be one way where he can put his foot flat on the floor. I found that if I raise the heel off the floor slightly, I'm much quicker than when I put it. Doesn't mean I can't move with it on the floor flat, but when I took my heel off the floor, and was able to move against my opponent. Many of you don't know this. Do you remember how the back heel of a fighter, the heel comes up? He's the one that did it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and from that day on, he has taken Kempo to another level. And I mean by another level, a level of its own. I can tell you this because I've seen it from the beginning till today. That's why I say that we had to change it in order to make it work for us. You got martial arts today still doing what their teachers actually taught them. And they do it okay. But they never become great, great. The ones that became great, like uh, Victor, and the puppet and all, they changed it. Yeah. And in order to become great, you have to do something with it because the art that they gave me to me under Parker, which is my base of foundation, I can't, I won't let that go because that was my foundation for learning how to fight. But in order for me to become a fighter, I had to change the base. I had to change different types of movements. I had to start putting me, or uh, us, into those movements. So I started shifting and movement and throwing quick, I can throw in quick things like you would do as a boxer. Because my art, the art that I've learned is Kempo, Wing Chun, Tai Chi, I use all of them. <laughs>